Often in water damage claims involving dishwashers, uh, refrigerators with ice makers, wash machines, these are some of the appliances that operate on a water control solenoid. When we get the device in to test it, the product will work as it was designed. We'll have no water loss, uh, no intermittent failures. We often will recommend that you then go to destructive testing of the solenoid valve. Uh, the process requires removing the mechanical fasteners of the unit so that you can look at the internal components. We're going to take time to disassemble one now so that we can show you an example of what we would be doing and, and kind of the outcome of that inspection. So this here is a water control solenoid and there's several fasteners on the corner which I'm going to remove. To remove these two mechanical fasteners it allows you to remove the magnetic solenoid. Magnetic solenoid is what pulls the plunger out and allows water to move through the device. And in this case, as you can see, there are two magnetic solenoid plungers that are located in this device. The plunger is operational. Now, until we open these up, we don't know exactly what's going to occur. But as you can see in this particular one, this control washer has completely disintegrated and breached and pulled off. That would allow water to, to, to flow and it could be intermittently. We just couldn't produce it. It may have been after 10 or 15 or 20 cycles it would have failed. But in this case there's a complete, complete breach of that internal washer. Uh, that's, that's one example of the type of failures that can be discovered when disassembling for destructive testing. I'm going to disassemble another unit here so that we can get a comparison. Again, you remove the mechanical fasteners. At that point, you can remove the electronic coils. Again, you have the plungers. And in this case here, the internal plunger has actually separated from the component. Uh, this, this washer would be set here if it had properly installed. You'll also notice inside one has a seat washer and one does not. This should have been uh, where it caused a continuous flow. So again, by taking it apart, you can somewhat determine what has caused the failure in that, that unit there. We're going to disassemble another water control solenoid again by removing the mechanical fasteners. Removing the electronic coils, the mounting plate, and there's the internal washers. Here again, we have a washer where the component has come apart. And if you'll notice on this particular washer, it's it's completely distorted. So you've got your failure as occurred on both basically components here because this washer will not seat. It's completely distorted. And you've also got this internal seal has broken. So there both the hot and the cold side would be leaking water. There can be other causes of failures in this. We can disassemble some of these. This is the flow port. And we're going to again take off the mechanical fasteners. And this would be the, the outlet port of the water into the machine. We've got it capped. One of the things you can see Look at the amount of debris that is in the filter screen. Dump it out on the table. This is chlorine deposits that have dried on the filter screen. This, of course, would cause the valve itself to malfunction. And in this case, the filter screen is clean. Uh, it kept all the debris out of the valve, but it was sufficient to actually cause the valve to malfunction. Some of the other valves that we have here we can disassemble. 
Again, removing the mechanic fasteners. This allows us to take off the magnetic coil. And we have the internal plunger. Removing that plunger, you can see that again it's corrosion buildup. That's a result of the filter screen has allowed some corrosion to move through it. But there, the valve, set valve head is completely contaminated and would not seal. So you would get a flow of water coming through there intermittently. It may work 10 times and then not work or work 20 times and then fail to work. So each of these valves that we've looked at, in this particular valve, we can see severe corrosion in the internal screen. We'll disassemble it once. And, uh, if you notice on this screen, again, we have mineral deposits, chemical buildup, and that of course would cause the malfunction of the valve to be able to control the water flow. Uh, we, we've disassembled a number of these valves. The question comes down to whether this should in fact be considered destructive testing. Uh, these are mechanical fasteners that are put in so that the valve can be disassembled. Um, I would think that this would not indicate necessarily destructive testing, but a disassembly. And this valve here has been in severe corrosion. The, the water, you can see the internal screen is completely rusted. Let's see what effects that this has had on a solenoid valve's operation. Moving the coil, the valve seat, you can see the internal valve is completely rusted. This would affect the ability of the valve to open and close. And the internal valve is also full of corrosion. On this particular valve, the material that's designed to stop the valve flow on this end neoprene rubber is not making contact. Again, it may on one and not on another. So these are all signs of intermittent failures. We'll open one last valve to conclude this. And again, it's important to understand that no knowledge is available until you approach this disassembly process. If you don't approach a disassembly process, then you're virtually not going to know what caused your failure. We'll remove the coil. This particular valve housing and you can see the seat was loose in there. And there's some pretty good distortions around the edge of that particular seat. This definitely would be one, each time it, it seated itself, this washer could move. Leak, not leak, 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 not leak, not leak, not leak, not leak. Again, critical intermittent failures. When you get a report back on a water control solenoid, I would highly recommend that you view, view this video and that you think about how solenoids work. And you may talk to your legal counsel in regards to whether this disassembly represents destructive testing or not. If it does, DPI can set up third-party testing for you where the disassembly can occur uh, under the requirements of destructive testing. If you have further questions on this, please feel free to contact our customer service department and uh, we'll try to answer those questions for you. Thank you for your time.